Greetings everybody, this is BJ Black from No Export For You and welcome to part 34 of my Let's Play of Mon Moose Quest Paradox RPG. Today we're looking at the new Labyrinth of Chaos. So we enter. <clears throat> the White Rabbit says, Welcome to the Reborn Labyrinth of Chaos. So, first of all, talk to the Shinigami for an explanation. And, I brought the best blacksmith in the Chaos Worlds. So, for the special blacksmithing that you'll be doing here, talk to her. First of all, this is Alice. You remember her? She says, Alright then, I will lend you my power. But it's only for this, limited to this strange world. So, now we can have Elis and Alice in the same party at the same time. But of course, if you leave, she's gone. Oh, no more Alice. Whoops, that was the wrong way. Okay, now you only get to talk to her once, but... If you want her back in the party. White Rabbit pops up. This is the remodeled made version 2.0. She remodeled it? Her? What are these maids anyway? They're so NPC-y that they hardly seem like actual characters. In any case. Just for what we want to do. And we can change our party here. Such as adding Alice. But there are other things. First of all, she's in charge of an item warehouse. So if you wanted to stuff a bunch of items in here, you're free to do so. Actually, I better keep those. I'm about to try the Labyrinth of Chaos. And it's hard. Now, if you wanted to, for instance, gather several hundred seeds for a character you want in the final chapter, for instance, Tamamo, you could probably hold 999 in the warehouse, where you can only hold 99 on your person. Other than that, it really doesn't strike me as anything valuable. She's got a little shop. There's nothing special in it. And otherwise, the normal made stuff. These books explain things that were changed in the 2.20 version. The weapons were all remodeled to make the fighting styles of each weapon more distinct from each other. This is the afterword. I did my best in writing this, so put it to good use. Rabbit. Yeah, sure thing, White Rabbit. Now, an explanation of the Labyrinth of Chaos. She tells us the entrance on the left goes to the Trial of Chaos. Those are 10 floor dungeons. If you defeat the boss at the end of 10 floors, you're, it is clear. And the entrance on the right is the Labyrinth of Chaos. It's an endless chaos dungeon. Now, the Trials of Chaos are short dungeons, being only 10 floors. If you get to the end of 10 floors, you're done. Now, the floors that you go to are different from the dungeons you're used to. The location of treasure chests and exits will be different, so your memories of the maps will not do you much good. And furthermore, you can't save in it. That's very important, so be sure to remember. And the deeper you go, the stronger the enemies get. Even though they're the same monsters by appearance, in the deeper reaches, their abilities get higher. 
But in the Trial of Chaos, you can get relics. And the deeper you go, the better the relics you receive. So, when you fight an enemy in the dungeon, your rare points will increase. And as your rare points increase, you get better and more valuable relics out of the deal. So, when your rare points get higher, the abilities of the relics get higher. If you want the best relics, then get in all the fights that you can. Furthermore, when you get out of the dungeon, your rare points will reset. You can't carry your rare points from one dungeon to into another. In the Trial of Chaos, there are eight different types. The details, well, ask again later. So each type of dungeon has ranks. If you clear the lower ranks, you can challenge the higher ranks. Hold on one sec here. Okay, I'm back. Of course, in the higher rank dungeons, the enemies will be stronger, but the rewards will be greater. In the higher dungeons, you'll get even better relics. So, it's recommended you first do the lower rank dungeons, lower rank trials, run through them multiple times, and get good relics, and then you should be strong enough to challenge the higher rank dungeons. With regard to the relics, ask somebody else about the details. That blacksmith, so that blacksmith over there should be knowledgeable. So, what you want? Next one. These are the types of. This tells you about the types of trials you can go on. In all, the trials have eight different types. In each, the floors. The tendency to get which type of relic will change. So, in each type of trial, certain relics will be more common than other relics. First of all, in the Forest of Eternity, you go through forest type fields. There you can get martial arts outfits, robes, magic hats, and light, yeah, lightweight armors. In the Hills of Carnage, You'll be in hill-type fields. There you can get armors and helmets and shields. Heavy-type armors. In the Sea of Truth, you'll be in sea-type fields. There you can get rapiers, katanas, bows and arrows. Basically, it's easy to get weapons that raise your speed and dexterity. In the Forgotten Desert, you'll be going through desert-type fields. There you can get musical instruments and kitchen knives and plates. So, weapons that are for specialized professions. In the Revolving Caves, you go through a series of cave-type fields. There you can find swords and spears, fists, axes, weapons that increase your attack power. In the Phasing Tower, you go through constructed areas. There you can get staves and rods and scythes, weapons that increase your magic power. In the Town of Demise, you go through town and village type fields. There you can get accessories easily. And in Limitless Chaos, You'll go through chaos type fields. There you can get gemstones easily. So, 
cons taking into consideration the type of equipment you want, pick the dungeon that's appropriate. And once you've got the weapons and armor you want, you can challenge the higher ranked dungeons. So, what do you want to know about? Alright, these two are about... The first two are about the Trials of Chaos, and this last one is about the Labyrinth of Chaos. This is pretty much the same as it was in the Catalyst chapter. It's an endless dungeon. There's no goal, and the deeper you get, and the only proof you have of doing anything is how deep you get. Every time the construction of the floor changes, and of course the rare points go up. So every so often you'll fight a boss as well. If you don't defeat the boss, you can't continue further. Furthermore, you can only save every 10 floors. And when you want to exit the dungeon, talk to the white rabbit inside. Well, you also get returned out here if you die. So once you leave it, you'll have to start over from the beginning. From floor one. So be careful about that. So if you want any more advice, I don't have any obligation to give it to you. Talk to that white rabbit over there. She looks like she has some free time. And as I said before, there's no goal in this dungeon. It's just how far, how deep you can get. So what do you want to learn about? Nothing, thanks. And the white rabbit will expend, will dispense random tips. I think she's got at least a dozen of them. But, let's go. But before we can enter, she does have something to say. She wants to give us a warning about a certain metal before we go in there. This metal is... Well, is acquired by... Clearing the final chapter of Monmouth's Quest Paradox without entering the Labyrinth of Chaos. So that's going to be a medal that's available in the final chapter. But if we enter the Labyrinth of Chaos here, then we won't be able to get that medal with this save data. So be careful. Well, in the end, the medals are just bragging rights rewards. But just in case, you might want to save into a new slot. Uh, sure. Thanks a bunch, White Rabbit. Man, I always get nervous when I'm going to be going into this place. But we're going to do it. Let's try the Hill of Carnage. Hills of Carnage. As you can see, the upper levels are locked. This is the place for heavy armors. Yep. Now, these aren't NPCs. You can see by the fact they're wandering around, they're actually encounters that are going to walk up to us and try to challenge us to a fight. I want to save you some time and not get into a bunch of fights, but right there, the ostrich girl, she's not wandering around, so I conclude she is an NPC. All right, let's run a marathon, right now. Okay, who's going to marathon? If you've done Labyrinth of Chaos in the previous game, you may remember what this is. This is going to add two to somebody's speed. Lucifina, we love Lucifina. So, yeah, she gets two speed. Now I need to find the exit. Well. Let's do a fight. Look, Bandersnatch girls. I think I'll be able to defeat a few enemies, at least on these lower floors. Now, about rare points. 
When we entered the level, it popped up a box. I should have explained it, but I closed it. And it said, our current rare points are one. And this is level, and this is floor one. Now, defeating this enemy, we get five more, so we're at six. Again, this improves the stuff we get out of chests. Uh, no exit here. Now, the enemies in here give us five rare points, but the enemies in the regular Labyrinth of Chaos only give one. So be careful with that. Hmm. I hate the ones that are really fast. Now, how do I get... Ah, oh, there's the next one. Huh. Not fast enough, Amara. Look at that, I got an item that I can equip and it's better than what I had before. These have random names. Random names. This is a speed Corius. Is a Corius a type of helmet? Ah, there it is. Alright, next floor. Now our rare points are 56. So in the Trials of Chaos, every floor is worth 50. In the regular Labyrinth of Chaos, every floor is worth only 10. Hey, what? Oh. Yeah, those warmers are undead types, so... I'm leading a party of angels, obviously they do a ton of damage. But still, I don't get a lot of recovery on my stuff, so I want to keep this to a minimum. Hmm. Ah. That's just an item. I suppose I should mention something I noticed. In this version, if you are full on some item or other, then when you open a chest that would normally give you that, it won't give you any, obviously. But it also won't pop up the box anymore. Now, you should be careful when you go to the exits when they're being guarded by a monster. They can get you as you move on to it. They can also get you across cliffs if they're in the right place. Hey. Well. There. Now, the other ones we got so far were in blue, but this one's in yellow. The blues are common items, and the yellow ones are rare. There may be super rares and super super rares or such like things. I don't know what colors they are yet. I haven't done this very long. Get out of my way, Alia. No, it's the Pope. I hate you, you stupid old fart. In any case, he can offer up a prayer that gives us job experience. And everybody gets some job experience. That's a bit of a change from the way it was before. Now here in the Hills of Carnage we get to see these type of enemies most of the time. In other maps you'll see other types of enemies. Come on, where's the exit? Oh jeez. Now I could have gone around the long way, but I decided to take this. I may just die here. It would not surprise me. Or maybe I'll survive? Surviving is good, I like surviving. I'm going to need to do a bunch of healing once I get out of here.
Mm, well, everybody survived. Oh, great. Now, if I did this in a particularly clever method, way I might be able to get by some of these characters without a fight. But sometimes it's just not worth the effort. Oh, that was a gem. Yeah, why don't I pop over? This is our first gem. This one gives your regular attacks a chance to cause incontinence upon the opponent. I'm glad we got one of those. It'll make explaining them a little easier when we get back out. Okay. This is not a new floor. This is between floors three and four or whatever we're on. Okay. Arrest the pirates. There's no way we'll let you marines beat us. So... We can help out the pirate mermaid, or we can help out the dragon child, marine. But either way, it's going to turn into a fight, and I'm not ready for a fight right now. If you side with the one side, the other one will... Well, you'll defeat the other one, and your side will give you an item that's appropriate to them. So we can stay. In this case, I think the pirates would give you a gun-type weapon, and the dragon child would give you a spear-type weapon, or something to that effect. In any case, I'm likely to lose, as I'm rather pathetic for this state of... This is a really hard dungeon, after all. And I, if possible, I'd like to get to the boss floor and show you guys what that looks like. Now, the good news about this is they can't actually interact with your last three members. So if you run this cleverly, you can be stuck here in a place where they can't actually get to you. Sato is probably the same as before, giving us experience. Yep. And this time she gives the whole party experience. Looks like I didn't get any level ups. I think it would have told me. I think in every level there's a chance for a blue chest somewhere. Only one place, though. So if you're doing this, memorize the places where the blue chests appear. And check them every time. Now, of course, if you're going for the highest rare points, you'll be killing everything anyway. Now, those between levels floors, there are a lot of things that can happen in them. A couple of characters fighting and you get to pick sides for one. There's one I got a few times where you get to choose the partner you wish to marry. It's uh, basically the same, actually. Although there isn't a fight involved. You still get a weapon or other item appropriate to the character you choose. There's one I saw once where you got to... Jeez, eh. Amara. There's one I saw once where you get to solve a murder mystery. The one I saw a couple times you get to... Hmm? Oh yeah, boss floor. This time, when you get to a boss floor, one of your characters will say something appropriate to their uh, assessment of the situation. Lucifina says, Boss, eh? I'll turn it into ashes. So we got some good stuff. Let's equip up. Now, since my characters are good with helmets, instead of, say, the magic type, 
and lighter armors. They all now have relic armors on. And you'll see they now have HP in the upper thousands rather than the mid thousands. Some of these things give that kind of thing. Whoops. Where's the where's the button? There it is. This item gives 700 HP and defense, magic defense, speed, etc. Oh yeah, on the right side there are all of these special effects. 1% uh, resistance to physical and this. 1% to that. 1% to omni damage. That's a new type of damage that exists here. Some resistance to status effects. This other one... Why do I keep hitting the wrong button? This one adds 1500 to life and again, defense and magic defense. Making our magic defense and physical defense actually pretty good. So we might survive a few rounds with this boss. Hmm. You know, I'm going to designate Mikaya... No, Mrushafina here, our healer. So... I don't want to think too much about this, so I'm just going to put on some equipment I feel is appropriate and try this boss. Queen Harpy. This is new. I would say this is Rifrezia. But while she was still alive, not the zombie. Well, we can look forward to some interesting new bosses then, can't we? I can't believe I did that. I designated her as our healer and I forgot to unlock her healing abilities. Well, we're so screwed. Uh, yeah, we're so screwed. Hmm. Yep. There I died. So, like I said, these are tough enemies and... I keep a bunch of my skills locked so that it's faster when you're berserked. If you have a bunch of skills to consider every time, well, the computer takes a little time to consider each skill separately. So having this locked meant it would consider about one-third as many skills. If you have characters with tons of skills and you spend a lot of time berserked, you'll notice when you don't have all of your skills sealed like this. Well, if you get enough skills, even if they are sealed, it takes a long time. But in any case... Now we get to talk about these relics I picked up. And speak to the blacksmith. What do you need? And she tells us how many gems we have on the left and how many relics we have on the right. So, gems can be socketed, or set into sockets, rather. For instance, I have this... I, I picked up a book. Obviously, they're less common than helmets, since I got four helmets. But yeah, books can happen there. And you can slot gems into them. Now, looks like all of my relics have only one slot. But they get as many as three. At least as many as three? Hell, they could go up to any number. I've only seen three. Is what I can say. Now, you can improve gemstones. Ours is a blue type gemstone. It's right here. This one we picked up gives our regular attack a 10% chance to impose incontinence. If we get five of them and pay the fee, we can change the five into one that gives us a 20% chance to impose incontinence. There are a ton of gemstones. 
I only got one because I didn't go into the limitless chaos where you get a ton of them. Now, improving your weapons and armor. We only picked her one weapon because that was a defense type area. You know what, I'm going to do the equip thing actually. Oops. I got everybody. I got everybody. Okay, improving equipment. This shows you which items you have equipped, which is useful. And what you don't have equipped. Now, you can improve these things by merging on a second item. This item here is a level zero relic. So if you have another level zero relic, you can attach it on to turn it into a plus one relic. The special abilities on the right don't seem to change as you get level ups, but the statistics, the statistic boosts on the left there will change. So 435, 74, 54. If I add on this thing, 522, 89, and 65. A little better. So well, let's do it again. 609, 104, So in order to give an item a level up, you need another item, unequipped, of that level or higher. Now, whether rares are better than commons is a good question. They seem to be better. They seem to have more abilities at the very least. But whether their stats are better is another question. In any case, that'll be about... whoops. The blacksmith here can also explain things. But I think I've given you a basic rundown of what she can do. If Puppy's in your party, when you talk to her, she'll... Puppy will say, Are you me? And the blacksmith will respond, Perhaps. Do you have work? And Puppy being as expressive as she is, I get the impression that this isn't actually her. Because she's... I mean, look at her. Her face is a refrigerator door. Mm. Oh, yes. When you're going through the labyrinth, occasionally you'll pop into an inter-floor space that is called a monster house. Those are really interesting. I'm sure you'll like them. We didn't see any this time, but you'll know them when you see them. In any case, that's the Labyrinth of Chaos for Confrontation Chapter in version 2.20 and later. In earlier versions, it's just what you had in the Confrontation chapter. So, this concludes my Let's Play of Confrontation chapter. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.